Oh, uh, so good afternoon, everyone. And I think maybe I might be one of the last presentations, and hopefully it doesn't keep you guys long from uh, happy hour and cocktails and all that great stuff. They always tend to put me last on conferences, so I don't know if it's a gift or curse, but people tend to like me towards the end because I try to get them faster. So I'll, I'll make sure I'll speed up. Um, so I'm Mohammed Abbas. I'm a uh, senior manager supporting the enterprise innovation group within TD Bank across Canada and the US, and specifically focused within the product sector of defining new ideas within emerging technology, entering new marketplaces where we would ideate, um, uh, go through exploration, validation, build, and then scale the business with multiple MVPs. Um, and it touches various verticals across design research, design thinking, all the way down to AR, VR experiences, going passwordless for a bank, or even uh, building uh, new marketplaces for high net wealth uh, clients. So it's like the world is your oyster from a product space perspective. A little bit about me, I'm a geek for UX and tech, so you're certainly gonna see that throughout the slides uh, later um, today. Um, what I'm here to really talk about today is just the, C, uh, the customer experience and the evolution of um, design experiences coming together with emerging technology. So if you can imagine the world when it comes to banking where it's radically open and it's connected to every embedded uh, engagement across various applications. So think about your Amazon shopping where it's easy for you to check out or even when you're walking around with your Google or iPhone, uh, Android or iOS device, and you're easily able to tap to pay or even set up a buy now, pay later just right from your couch when you're making a purchase. So it's connected and it's inoperable when it comes to all of the um, embedded finance future focus of you being a consumer spender and doing everything at ease as you're clicking through. And then think about the converging technologies of everything coming into play now. Generative AI is a huge prime factor in this space today. And imagine if it converges with blockchain or even starts to converge with AR, VR, and XR, and the metaverse. All great concepts that could drive a whole new marketplace and evolution of what you can do as a business and for your company. And all with that, you always wanna keep in mind, does it make sense to the user? What are we building? And is there, a, is there an opportunity to do some research and discovery where you could test it in a focus group to get some interesting feedback and have continuous feedback loops to build your, your new um, technology tied to elevated customer experience at the end. So some of the experiences that we're seeing today from like a converging that I just wanted to pinpoint over the last two to three weeks that I've been keeping an eye on was how Meta, a Meta launches Meta AI, where it's a universe of AI companions right at your fingertips. So imagine the empathy about using a companion um, right at your fingertip where you're able to conduct any conversation with it and it's having an alias, um, A-list a celebrities turned into alias or si split personality uh, companions. So you'll see Kendall Jenner there, uh, Odell Beckham Jr., and they're all split with different names or Tom Brady and such. So it's a unique front that Meta is proposing. So it makes me think, well, what if you have a companion from a financial service perspective, someone that is always there to take care of your investments, take care of your lending needs at any given point, but they're always tailored just specifically for you and your household. Um, we spoke a little bit about the open banking concept with Apple. They're testing in the UK how to now launch real-time balances right in your wallet. So right there, to me, that's converging technology coming into play. So you're walking around with your smart device and you always have full-time access into your transactions, the geofencing of where you're going, how you're spending. Yes, you're being tracked, but it's more hyper-personalized and tailored to you. And then the bigger hit in my eyes was Tesla. Tesla is not a car company. It's an autonomous robotics company, if you think about it. And now it's truly entering the financial services space. They're using their supercomputer AI chip, Dojo, to be able to leverage the cameras that are built into a Tesla vehicle to now build autonomous disruption within the fin service space of insurance. 
So if you are driving a Tesla and you happen to get into an accident, they're using the cameras to speed up the accidental claim coverage. They're actually speeding up the recovery process. And on top of that, if you're a good driver, you might get a discounted rebate on your insurance with Tesla. So it's another concept that it's converging technology all together, that it's showing us how to, multiple marketplaces could play well and build new product ideas. So what does that look like from an experience standpoint? If you build a compelling experience, customers are, ever, are always gonna see your company as everlasting. 86% of buyers are willing to pay more as long as this experience is always spot on. It's seamless, it's intuitive. Look at Apple's ecosystem. They've done billions of dollars in sales just on their subscription model when it comes to release, releasing new iPhones. And every year, majority of their sales are going up because they have people hooked. They're constantly um, doing it because they have an intuitive experience of just upgrading. Um, other concepts are just driving more of the user experience within your, your mobile app to be simplified and easy to use. But how can you now start to embed XR within your mobile app as you're going about? Is there financial literacy tied to it? Is there um, any efficiencies or productivity as a user if you're guiding to use the mobile app? Um, other concepts were driven by PwC stating that 72% of customers will share a positive experience with six or more people. On the other hand, 13% will share their negative experience with 15 or more. So it's eye-opening to me because it's when I think about launching a product, there's always the concept of sometimes you may skip research or you may skip user feedback, and you may just launch the MVP and you may gather some, some feedback right there and then. That could be a disaster. So from our play within the enterprise innovation, we always make it the, the stepping stone of the first initial step that we're really taking is building a quick paper prototype and test, doing rapid usability testing and then returning uh, to define new results and behaviors. With that, um, when looking into the space of just how a journey has grown within debit card issuance, whenever you lost your card, you would have to call the contact center years ago you would receive a debit card within 14 days. It was a painful process and you needed it right there and then, especially if you're traveling, especially if you're traveling. So now it went from going into the store and getting an instant issue debit card or calling the contact center where it's now easily accessible right through the mobile app. And we made it as a seamless experience where you can always replace your card and get it now within the digital wallet. So we cut down 14 days to a matter of seconds. So that to me is a converging trend over the years of developing self-service capabilities. But what if we start forging new experiences with all the emerging technology that is coming into play? A true story or um, something with uh, years ago back in the 80s, if you guys remember Infocom launched the game Zork. It was a text-based adventure game and they made millions. They made 10 million within the first four years. I think by 1984, they were a profitable company. But since they didn't take the shift to go with audio and visual by the end of the decade, their operations were seized. They no longer started to exist the video game. They had to put it off the shelf. And the reason being is because the big hitters came out, Super Mario Brothers, um, Sonic the Hedgehog, and these games were global because they were adding much more immersive experience that were visual and had audio cues tied into it. So thinking about that experience from years ago in the 80s, well, how does it tie into other marketplaces and new sectors? And that's where, from my perspective, years ago working in the bank, I, f I figured, okay, well, AR is a hot, uh, to me, it's, it's a hot, shiny object. Well, how can I bring it into a financial service space? And we had fun with it. So years ago, we worked with Zapper. So shout out to Ed Morris, he's sitting in the crowd now, um, where we wanted to develop a, a heightened awareness virtual reality game for customers that are new to bank. So if you were to open up a new, to bank, a new account with TD, we wanted to teach you about how to, lever how to use the mobile app to make a mobile deposit, um, transfer money with Zelle, set up bill pay, um, 
use, uh, figure out how to um, do, use other self-service capabilities with our mobile app. So we decided, why don't we take a financial literacy route using AR? Let's test the market. Let's see what happens. So while working with Zapper, we decided to build a digital welcome kit. So it's a cardboard box that is uh, designed as uh, similar from Google and sent out and mailed to customers. We sent out about 15,000 units and we measured it across the spectrum where if they opened an account in branch, mobile or web, we measured the behavior difference. And what we were trying to do is assess if we were to leverage virtual reality as, as, a, as a gimmick, not as a gimmick, but more sense as a financial literacy tool, would it help us increase the conversion or the adoption rate of our services? Will it help the cognitive awareness? So we noticed for those that did engage, we had an 18% engagement because uh, the open rate was quite low. However, the 18% engagement led to, led to those that did engage within each feature or service the conversion rate was as high as 31%. And then we started mapping out cohorts to look at the behavior of those users over a period of time, over 90 days, compared to a control group that never received the kit. And we noticed higher adoption, higher engagement activities that they became monthly active users. So out of that 15,000 population, it gave us a good number to say that there is a space within AR VR that we could use for financial literacy. Similar concept is that we, we noticed 56% of credit card issuer, uh, credit card customers, um, they make a decision on which credit card to get based on our offerings, our digital offerings. And what we wanted to do was back in May, we said, okay, let's launch a very quick, um, it, um, marketing tactic of driving financial literacy around our TD Bank credit cards. And for those that did open up a credit card, they would receive this inter interactive experience that we built with Zapper as well to see if they adopt going paperless, adopt um, rewards and, and points, or even adopt the usage of card control capabilities such as alerts and um, you know placing it lost or stolen, et cetera. And we're measuring that, uh, that core group over time. We actually just launched it um, around closer to the springtime. So now we're, we're measuring them over like a six to seven month period. The other experiences that we did was, well, let's bring it internal in-house. And uh, the team that I just joined, another uh, within Enterprise Innovation, I'm excited for them because they actually rethought the intern experience of how to make it more fun and engaging. And they worked with um, Meta to del deliver the concept of how can you bring the workforce into place for uh, co-ops and interns to have that engagement with one another that are cross country. This was primarily focused in, ca in the Canadian marketplace. So in Canada, they launched this for all co-op and intern where they got um, at least results back that 93% felt compelled to recommend um, AR and VR to their friends and colleagues as a tool to leverage for getting to know one another and also just having meetings or basically learning about the company culture right through a VR experience. They felt that they weren't, um, there were no barriers or uh, distractions if they were on Zoom or Teams or conference or WebEx, et cetera. So this was a great initiative that we led. Now it's used by our early talent team. So whenever you're hired through the bank, it's part of the process that you would go through a VR experience. And then, Going now into the converging tech, um, I mentioned the AI companion. So I was trying to measure the, the, the framework of like, who's gonna actually speak to an AI agent or a companion. And right before Meta released it, I kind of went back and I wanted to see if another company was doing this. And actually it is, uh, there's Character AI, which is a chatbot interactive experience that you can select your favorite character um, or celebrity or any mimic, um, someone that you want, want it to mimic precisely, and tailor it to be an AI agent just for you. So Character AI launched this, and in a matter of eight months, uh, they saw 19 million monthly active users. That growth is tremendous for an eight-month scale. So that led to the assumption that, okay, is this a new experience that we could look to build? 
And with that, we took it back to start focusing on the emerging channels and get a little bit creative to see, could you build connected experiences by taking our chatbot, revisiting it, and personalizing the chatbot with a new user interface, a human OS, a digital person that can speak to you, engage, deal with any of your um, services or your maintenances from a financial service perspective and guide you. So with this human OS, um, this is designed by Soul Machines. Uh, we're exploring just a prototype, um, nothing too crazy. It's not launched, but it gives us, it opens up our eyes again, just like it did with AR VR. So now what are we doing with generative AI when bringing it to a different user interface? And it's not text anymore. It's not text anymore from the past couple of weeks. GPT-4 has done phenomenal work where you can even upload photos and it'll describe to you what's going on in the photo or uh, someone demonstrated how to fix a bike and it guided them. So user interfaces are more than likely to change and putting in the practice of that human-centered design would give you the ability to get creative and then do something as fun and exciting that I could show you the prototype today if this works. So you can't hear her. I'm going to remove the... I wanted to know if you would like to learn more about one of our various banking products, or if you would like me to help you choose one that best fits your needs. So uh, I, are you guys able to hear her? Awesome. So this is uh, Soul Machines. And essentially what you can do is build an autonomous digital person and it uses the camera to measure your pat facial pattern displays. If you're frowning, it has empathy. It will ask and say, oh, did I say something wrong? Did I upset you in any way? And it has, it's tied to a uh, your AI LLM model. Um, it can have a full conversation with you. So in the aspect of a product recommendation, if I wanted to learn more, like she's nodding right now because she's looking at me and she's engaging. So if I keep nodding, she's gonna keep do um, doing the same action as well. So if I wanted to know, um, let's say I'm a new to bank customer and I'm just logging in online and I wanna know product recommendations. Um, can you tell me about your TD convenience checking account? Oops. Can you tell me about your TD convenience checking account? I swear it works. I think it's probably because I keep pausing and stuff. All right, let's just, let's just click. There's a ton of options out there. If you're looking to open an account, what would you like to learn more about? Checking. TD convenience checking is a great checking account option. It offers low minimum daily balance requirements and other perks. Here are a few of the features it offers. Which is pretty neat because it could actually give me a rate quote too I'll later. Provide you a link to the full guide. Or are you ready to start the application? So the concept here is how would you envision this across other spectrums, not just a mobile application, but even in branch. This is actually done in Dubai today. Um, there's certain flagship banks that actually have a digital person that is a facilitator and a guide. So if you step into the branch, you're actually greeted by a digital person. Um, Citizens Bank launched just last month a very creative um, uh, new experience. And it's a virtual assistant and it's human-like, straight up human-like, it's creepy. Um, she's more creepy, but it's in the flesh that as you're walking up to the ATM, you're getting assisted by an actual person, but it's all AI. So that leads into us having the intention of, can we explore and how do we do that? So for us at TD, we give full autonomy within the enterprise innovation to centralize all creative solutions and ideas and we ideate until we build out unique experiences and we find that it's compelling and it's new to our marketplace. And we go through the ranks of just exploration, validation, build, build an MVP, test, continuous learning, and do it in a safe space. We had a lot of exciting opportunities that we, um, well, exciting accomplishments when we worked with Zapper. We held a design sprint, came in to our Philly lab, 
and just built out a lot of our AR experiences together. And we learned about the space as well because they're leading in the industry. So all, with all that said, I think it opens up our eyes that the future of technology needs a space for customer experiences as well. And we haven't spoken about that yet. We always said, what could it do? But do customers really need it? And what does it look like? That's it. I think I had two questions on the app. Um, so how does TD Bank measure the ROI and the impact of its uh, XR initiatives on customer experience and business outcomes? So I think I spoke about that a little bit earlier and I'll touch on it again. Um, looking at the experience of how we launched our digital welcome kit for new to bank customers, essentially what we wanted to do was measure um, you'll find this hysterical, but when the mobile deposit feature launched and we did some usability testing years ago, um, I wasn't around then, but um, what customers were actually doing was they were taking the check and they were putting their phone on top of the check. They were thinking that the check was going to just transfer in. The other was, you see the crosshair with the green corners around the check? Just to get that, at the very beginning of time when it first launched, and you probably experience it today if you have to scan your credit card and it's painful because you got to pan in and pan out, the failure rate there was probably around 60%. So one of the reasons being why we built this is because we actually wanted to teach customers through the gamification, aim the crosshair at the checks floating in the air and zap it away. So that way you can teach them how to do a mobile deposit correctly. And then overall, Mobile deposit, I mean, a deposit in store costs us about what, $2 or some change? So the cost savings of converting that user to do a mobile deposit would show us a significant amount of savings worth. Um, so if you were doing like a million and point, I don't know, a million and a half, you'll probably, for every 1%, you'll probably have cost savings of close to a mil or something to that degree. Um, and then I don't know if there were any other questions in the crowd too. Mark Strayer from Sam's Club. Um, that demo that you just showed, which was awesome. Thanks. Um, any issues when you're testing it where you have, they have to turn on their camera, right? And so kind of, is there any, have you run any issues with that where you're like, it's not really a person, I'm turning on my camera, I can't see myself, but it's watching me. Do, do, is there any affordances so we, or things that you have to, to take into account? We haven't done um, any usability testing just yet. But us playing with it internally, it could get finicky, as you can see earlier, right? And I think it depends on the microphone of what it's picking up and sort. For us, the, the nature of it is how do users at the end of the day, or people, like how, how do they feel speaking to a digital avatar as opposed to a real life human? Um, and we've, we've gotten across some research that it shows that some people are actually comfortable talking to a digital person versus a real human about their financial hardship because they feel vulnerable and embarrassed. So that's one way that we can test it out, but we're still exploring like what's the right method to test it safely where it doesn't scare the heck out of people and then ruin our brand and the reputational impact is huge where we could just play into the space of maybe do we explore the Gen Z population? Is this something that would be catered to them? Because they're always on the go, they never want to see anyone. So would they be open to that? So I think that's where we would lead from a usability perspective. So I have a couple of questions on this. Uh, it's very interesting, um, not just from a user experience, uh, but from a, you know learning and going through several procedures. Uh, as a manufacturing organization, we have a lot of standard operating procedures, specifications for maintaining equipment. I see this as being able to uh, bring those up quickly when somebody is looking for something, right? Um, did you use GPT-4 as the back end of this, or did you build your own? The digital person? Yes. So the digital person provides you with um, the company is called Soul Machines, and they do the autonomous design of what you see. The back end, you can connect it to your LLM model, 
or you could have you can have a proprietary or a build um, you know buy. And what we did was we just just to test it out for now we had it scrape our public site information, so all of our FAQs. So that product recommendation question that I was going back and forth with her that's on our public site. So any general information it's pulling from there. So the back end is designed with a hierarchy to reach out to TD's public site first, gather all the data. If it doesn't have that information, they go to the next intent of what we built, our library of FAQs that's probably not hosted anywhere, and we hosted it on, on the back end. And then last, it's actually, I have another model where it, it was connected to ChatGPT, uh, just to test it out. So you'll see a huge pause when you're asking questions and it goes through the hierarchy. If it has the answer through your library, it gets it right away. But if for fallback intents, we had to connect it to ChatGPT just to see how it would work out. You know how you enter a question in ChatGPT if you've used it? It's a little bit of a delay to get that response. There's a major delay in her response. And then you also get the lengthy novel. So you gotta build the guardrails around it. Um, it's capable of building guardrails around ChatGPT and using it, but you still have to make it safe and regulated and such, so yeah. And to follow up on that about content, if you point it to your own library of documentation or content, is it able to read it, not just give you a reference, but give you a link to exactly where in the document paragraph yeah. where it found that content? Yeah, it could certainly do that. Awesome. So a lot of LMO, like a lot of uh, GPT models now could certainly do that um, if you wanted to. Uh, okay, first name is Brooke, um, and the U.S. government um, uh -oh. is my company, <laughs> <laughs> which I've heard no one else saying. Um, so I'm going to ask an odd question, okay? So everything I've been seeing in, uh, a lot around here is the um, users interfacing and stuff like that. Are you actually looking into or doing anything virtually inside um, TD where it's analyzing, like you, you mentioned all these stats and stuff. Are you actually using virtual reality for those number type things and doing behind the scene type things? Yeah, to analyze, you know what I'm saying? Looking at the time, of, time spent on it, right? Uh, uh, no, no, no. No, I mean actually using virtual reality and data layering of your data type stuff. We're not there yet. Okay. No. Um, it is an interesting concept, but we haven't played within that space yet. The only internal that we've done, honestly, was just the co-op and the interns, but there's the concept of data visualization and try to see where, where we could play as a bank. We haven't explored that yet. I think we're over on time. Awesome, thank you guys. <laughs>